In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of capital structure with debt and taxes, adding that imperfection in the marketplace. So let's come to a couple of our other examples to see how this might play out. So let's talk about recapitalizing. That means all we're doing is changing the capital structure. So we have a company that has 20 million shares at 15 bucks a share, has no debt. It uh, has stable earnings, 35% the tax rate. It's going to borrow $100 million on a permanent basis, and it's going to use this to buy back outstanding shares. So what is the value of the company prior to leverage? 20 million times the 15 is $300 million. If they borrow $100 million, what is the tax yield? From our form, you know, it's the tax rate times D. So 35 million is the value of, or the present value of the interest tax yield. So the total value of this levered company now is $335 million. But 100 million of that is debt. So equity in this case, increase or now is 200 and 35 million dollars so let's think about what happened although the value of the shares drops they're still getting a hundred million dollars right the hundred million dollars of debt is paid to these shareholders so they they still get the 335 million dollars so let's see if we can again keep looking at this in a, in a different way right so if they buy back these shares, they're going to buy back 16.67 million if they buy it back at the current price. Then the company is going to have a remainder of 13.3 million shares. So if the total value is 235 million, the new share price is $17 per share when you divide those out. But wait a minute, now did that increased, right? So the total gain to shareholders is 35 million. If you take 2.625, that's the earnings they had, multiply it by 3.3 million shares, that's our $35 million. So the shareholders that keep their shares are gonna earn a capital gain of $2.63. So if the company buys back these shares at 15, when they're done, the shares left over are automatically going to be worth 17. Why would you tender your shares if you knew the price was going to go up? How are we going to get shareholders to participate in this transaction? Well, what we have assumed is that we'll be able to sell as soon as we uh, introduce this transaction that the share price is going to stay the same but as soon as that information is given to the public the public will automatically reanalyze this company and the stock price will actually go to six dollars sixteen dollars and seventy five cents so the three hundred and thirty five million dollar value will be immediately recognized. So now it's 1665 is what they'd have to pay for those shares. So again, 1675 minus the $15, that's $1.75 per share. And again, this is the benefit, the tax yield, $1.75 times 20 million basically tells us that the increase that the, that the payout provided to the old shareholders was $35 million. So if securities are fairly priced, the original shareholders capture the full benefit of the tax yield from an increase in leverage. So essentially what we're saying is there are, there are a lot of things that work here. We've added an one of the imperfections, we've added taxes. But now we're also talking about whether or not the shareholders know about the transaction 
or they don't know about the transaction. If they know about the transaction, that will trigger a change in value because of the information content in that announcement, if you will. So now let's add, let's add another twist. Let's add personal taxes, right? We've already added corporate taxes. Now let's add investor taxes. Interest payments are taxed as income, as ordinary income. So it'd be whatever your tax bracket was. Currently, that's a maximum of around 39%. And equity investors also have to pay taxes on dividends and capital gains. And currently, those are roughly 15 to 20%, depending on your tax bracket. So how does this ultimately impact the tax shield? The taxes that the investors pay are going to somewhat remove some of the benefit of the corporate tax shield, right? Since in the end, the owners own the tax shields, right? They own the corporate tax shield. If they now have to pay benefits on that or taxes on that tax shield, then obviously the value of the company is diminished by the addition of this personal tax rate. So the true tax benefit is a combined effect of both corporate and personal taxes. So what's going to happen is our effective tax rate is going to change. And again, if you do a little bit of math here, the formula on the right here, I think, is the easiest to understand. This is our T, T sub C from the previous thing. This is that number or equates to that tax weighting, if you will, of the benefit towards debt. So T sub C is the tax on corporate taxes. T sub E is on shareholders. T sub I is on bondholders. So let's ask some very basic questions. What if T sub E and T sub I were equal? If these two tax rates are equal, this divides out. So we'd have one minus one, which is zero, then minus TC times debt. So this is our corporate tax thing. If these two are equal, that gives us ultimately then the Mediglian Annie and Miller with corporate taxes. But what would happen if the numerator equaled the denominator? How would that play out? Well, if this numerator equals the denominator, this equals one, one minus one is zero. So then we ultimately would have a number that matched the value of the unlevered company, right? Because it's zero times D is the tax shield. Now, what we recognize though, is there is some differences in tax. They're not equal. And currently the equity tax is less than the debt tax. So there is going to be some benefit to taxes. So first of all, let's look at a graphical representation and see how this plays out in general. Since we still have a number, right, that when you multiply it by debt, it represents a value. That value has to be between Medigliani and Miller with corporate taxes and Medigliani and Miller with no taxes. So it's got to be somewhere in the middle here. Where it is, I don't know. It depends on the current tax code. So let's look at how taxes may have changed. In 1985, the corporate tax rate was 46%. Personal tax averaged at 35% and the average personal tax on interest income was 50%. So the tax effective tax rate, the benefit was 29.8%. So if you multiplied 0.298 times the amount of debt you have, that would represent the tax yield. Of course, in the next year it went up, the, the effective tax rate went up in 95, 2009 it went down, and in 2018, again, with some estimations, if you will, 
we have a 21% corporate tax rate. On average, the equity income taxes are about 15%, and the highest personal income tax is 39.6%, so the effective tax rate is 11.2%. But for an average person, maybe, maybe the average tax rate in the United States is actually closer to 20% then obviously the effective tax rate would be higher because we would lose less benefit here from uh, the interest tax effect, if you will. So now we have what? The value of a levered company equals the value of an unlevered company plus, again, this is the present value of the tax shield. The weighted average cost of capital, again, it's still the same calculation, except now this T sub C would now be that adjusted effective tax rate that um, we, would, we talked about in, in that previous chapter. So with personal taxes, the firm's equity and debt costs of capital adjust, right? We're going to compensate investors for their tax burdens. The net effect is that personal taxes are a disadvantage for debt because it causes the weight of, of weighted average cost of capital to decline at a slower rate. Still, if you look at our graph, remember the graph, we still want to maximize debt to maximize value. So one of the biggest challenges here is, quite frankly, most of it lies with the tax code that uh, investors in general have a wide range of capital gains that they pay. Most wealthy investors are not going to invest in corporate bonds because they don't want to pay um, the high personal income tax on interest income. So the actual investors of debt, the majority of those folks are going to be people that are either currently if it's in a retirement account, uh, that might, might have zero tax effect. But certainly, retired people will have lower tax rates in general than what we might see at the um, other end of, of the wealth spectrum. So if you kind of think about the bottom line here, calculating this effective tax rate is kind of difficult and to understand how that might influence a particular company and their choice of debt is equally as difficult and complicated. So it's going to vary. The advantage will vary across firms and also between investors. So what we know is that there is a tax shield. We don't know the exact influence of that on value because we don't know the actual present value of the interest shield or the tax shield. So that's the end of the second video on debt and taxes.